Janelle Monet is a multifaceted creator, which is apparent in her concept albums, film roles, live performances, and signature style. And behind her many honors and multiple Grammy nominations lies a true classic American origin story. Here is her stunning transformation. I don't write these songs just for me. I write them for people just like you. Born in 1985, Monet is a native of the Quindaro community of Kansas City, a settlement founded by Native Americans and abolitionists that became a haven for African Americans, according to Rolling Stone. Her mother was a janitor, but Monet's father struggled with substance abuse issues for decades. She said, My father is a recovering crack addict. He was in and out of prison, so I've seen the ups and downs of drug addiction. Things were taken from us growing up. I would win like $500 in a talent show, and I had to give it to my mom to help pay for the light bill and the gas bill. Fortunately, her father has been in recovery for many years, and they have since repaired their relationship. But despite her struggles, Monet's talent was shining through at a very young age, as she won talent shows and snagged the leads in school musicals. Oh, Janelle was such a cutie. She was always singing so. Monet was even kicked out of church once for breaking into a rendition of Michael Jackson's Beat It in the middle of the service. Clearly, her creativity could not be contained. Oh. My. God. In addition to all of that, Monet was also a participant in a young playwrights program as a teenager, according to the New York Times. By the time she graduated from high school in the early 2000s, she was ready to discover what was next. Once she finished high school, Monet was accepted at the American Music and Dramatic Academy in New York City, and she headed off to the Big Apple to study musical theater, according to the New York Times. While she was there, Monet shared a room with her older cousin at Amsterdam and 140th, as she was unable to afford to live on campus. Her cousin worked nights at the post office, so the two slept in shifts in their small apartment. Monet did receive some financial help from her church congregation, and she supplemented that by working shifts as a maid. But it wasn't long before something new came calling. While Monet was making a go of it in New York, one of her best friends was studying in a historically black college town in Atlanta, and that friend told Monet all about it, according to the New York Times. After hearing about the lively local culture, Monet decided it was time to make a change. She told The Quietus, I wanted to really feel inspired and start things with Janelle Monet. I didn't want to get dictated to by anybody, except for just listening to and accomplishing my own heart, to get in contact with the things that made me unique. What I see all the time is that the artists in Atlanta genuinely want each other to win. Once Monet settled in Atlanta, it quickly became apparent that she had made the right move. She added, There are so many other like-minded individuals in Atlanta. I have a creative family down there. It consists of visual artists, performance artists, screenwriters, graphic novelists, you name it. They help make Atlanta special for me. It didn't take long for Monet to find her groove. She moved into a boarding house, established an art collective, enrolled at Georgia State University's Perimeter College, and began working on her own music, according to The Times. Monet also recorded a CD that she distributed, performed live on campus, and uploaded to her MySpace page. I would be selling my CDs, and then I would walk down here, right here, right on these library steps. I used to play the guitar and perform my music. After that, Monet started getting noticed by the big shots in the local music scene, including Big Boy from OutKast. That, in turn, caught the ear of none other than Sean Combs, who was immediately interested in her work. He remembered, I just knew she was going to be important to music and culture. It was the same sort of feeling I had when I first heard Biggie or Mary J. Blige, and I wanted to help introduce this artist to the world. Monet signed to Bad Boy Records in 2008. He opened up doors for me. Now well-established in the Atlanta art scene, Monet set to work on creating her first full-length album, The Arc Android, which she released in 2010. The album featured the sonic journey of Cindy Mayweather, Monet's alter ego, who was born on her Metropolis EP thanks to the help of her collaborators Nate Rocket Wonder and Chuck Lightning. She explained to The Quietus, We love the film industry and everything that's about creating a big idea, a concept album. We're into movies, and we wanted to create an emotion picture with the Arc Android. So we did that. I love science fiction. I love the arts. You know, I don't think that I fit. My goal has never been to, to fit into any type of category. Meanwhile, doors were flying open for Monet. She toured with industry heavyweights No Doubt and Bruno Mars, became a cover girl model, and collaborated with Erica Badu and Solange Knowles, as noted by the New York Times. In addition, she found a truly royal mentor. 
Prince. She told Rolling Stone, He said he wanted to give me advice before I got too involved within the industry, and that if I ever needed to speak with him, he's always available. Monet and Prince remained friends until his untimely death in 2016. Three years after dropping her first full-length album, Monet released her second album in 2013, The Electric Lady. Born out of self-exploration and a curious desire to paint the same female form for months in a row, Monet found the name for the album in a conversation with her therapist. She told Billboard, "...what I wanted to do was create an album that deals with this concept of the electric lady, and a world where these electric ladies were realizing their superpowers and doing self-realization into self-actualization and nurturing the community through their gifts and their unique perspectives on life." Hi, I'm Janelle Monet, also known as Cindy Mayweather, also known as Wendy Bangs. Solange Knowles, Prince, Miguel, Esperanza Spalding, and Erica Badu all collaborated with Monet on the album, on which she showcased the true breadth of R&B. She told the outlet, "...musically, I wanted to create an album that was rooted in R&B, but make sure I was capturing the diversity in R&B music." While Monet was busy killing it in the music industry, movie scripts began arriving in her mailbox. But it wasn't until 2016 that she made her film debut in the 2017 Academy Award winner for Best Picture, Moonlight. Monet connected instantly with the script, which resonated with her deeply. Stop putting your head down in my house. You know my rule. It's all love and all pride in this house. She told The Guardian, "...I had a strong visceral reaction to the Moonlight script, partly because I felt I knew all of these characters. I've played the role of Teresa in real life. My family and friends always have a shoulder to lean on with me." Moonlight wasn't the only film Monet starred in during 2016 that received a ton of Oscar buzz. That same year, she appeared in Hidden Figures, a critically acclaimed and Academy Award-nominated film about three black female mathematicians who played vital roles in the NASA space program in the 60s. I had no idea they hired. There are quite a few women working in the space program. Based on a true story, the film brought the lives of Katherine G. Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson to the big screen for the first time, and showed just how important their work was in a time when they faced serious barriers because of their race and gender. Ladies, that there is a God-ordained miracle. Monet signed on for the film for many of the same reasons she accepted a role in Moonlight, to uplift the LGBT community, empower women, and showcase those typically underrepresented in movies. In an interview with Atlanta Magazine, she explained, "...as an artist, I want to ensure that moviegoers see different kinds of black women being portrayed on screen. Representation in film is extremely important. I knew I had to drop what I was doing to be a part of them." On top of having a successful music career and scoring leading roles in major films, Monet is also an activist and advocate. It's important that, that I tell my story and I tell stories about us in the future and redefine what it means uh, to be African American in the future and where we can go." She's attended protests for the Black Lives Matter movement, released a protest anthem in support of the black men and women who were killed by police officers and vigilantes, and threw her support behind Hillary Clinton in the 2016 presidential election. Obviously, Monet is not afraid to speak her mind, especially on issues that matter to her. "...An injustice done to you is an injustice done to me." Monet also created a grassroots nonprofit called Femme the Future, with the goal of creating employment opportunities for women who are in the arts. She explained to Ebony Magazine, "...I wanted to create a platform to shine light on women and their talent, whether it's behind the scenes or in front of the camera. A beautiful future is a future where women are included in all different aspects." In April of 2018, Monet dropped an album that shook the music industry from the ground up, Dirty Computer. The Grammy-nominated record is the third full-length release from Monet and was accompanied by a 48-minute film of the same name. The album features an impressive list of collaborators, such as Pharrell Williams, Brian Wilson, Zoe Kravitz, and Grimes, and the influence and legacy of Prince is palpable. Not only is the album star-studded and critically acclaimed, but it's also the first time Monet put herself out there as a completely vulnerable human instead of as an android character. She also came out as queer, telling Billboard, "...when I come home at night and take off my makeup and my performance uniform, I still am a young black queer woman from America who grew up with working-class parents." So it was just important to speak from that perspective and, in the process, let people know that it was important for dirty computers to feel like we have a community. Remember the art collective that Monet founded when she moved to Atlanta in the early 2000s? 
Not only is it still around and thriving, but the Wonderland Art Society is expanding. In late 2018, Deadline reported that Wonderland Pictures had inked a first-look production agreement with Universal Pictures, and that's on top of its Wonderland Records arm. The mission of Wonderland Pictures is to highlight stories that historically haven't been front and center. Monet shared in an interview with NPR, There are a lot of people that I respect and admire, like Issa Rae and Lena Waithe and Jordan Peele, who are also pushing forward underrepresented voices. I just hope, and Wonderland hopes, to continue to push culture forward and redefine how we are viewed. I want to make movies the dirty computers can feel proud of. Welcome to the future. After a banner 2018 and on the heels of her performance at Coachella in 2019, the future is looking bright for Janelle Monet. She's slated to appear in several movies, and of course there will be new music on its way if the singer's prolific track record is any indication. The great thing about being an artist and being a creative is there's no wrong way. Like, nobody can tell me what I just did was wrong. But one thing everyone can count on is that Monet will continue to lift up black women and work to give them a louder voice. She told The Quietus, We're not all monolithic, us young black women, and we have our own ideas and concepts. We're into science fiction, we're into so many things, and we should be constructive and unapologetic about who we are. I don't apologize to anybody about the kind of artist I am, nor will I allow anybody to define who I am either. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.